What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y, and today I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by social media influencer, YouTuber, esthetician, entrepreneur, owner of brands such as Glam by Leah and Leah Lay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the one and only Leah. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. I'm super excited. Thank you so much, Dave, for having me on. Thank you. Thank you for coming and, you know, being a part of this energy. I'm looking forward to this. I, um, I want to provide a lot of great insight for uh, the people out there just to provide a little something different. Um, you are someone, like I said, you have very prestigious brands in the esthetician world and uh, you're doing your thing on YouTube as well. Thank so. You. You're welcome. So I know a lot of people want to get into the content world because I get I, I consider myself a micro <laughs> influencer, YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. And people hit me up a lot. So I know they reach out to you as well. Absolutely. You even, yeah. And you even have an ebook to, you know, provide info with that, which we'll get to. But I just want to shed a light on what goes behind the scene of truly being a content creator, YouTuber, social media influencer, mm -hmm. all of that. Because people think it's just, oh, I press record, call some, upload it, and that's it. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah, if yeah. people knew. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna get into that. Uh, first and foremost, are, we're shooting from Charlotte. Are you a North Carolina girl? I am born and raised in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Jacksonville, the East Coast. Yes, yeah. yes. Military, all of that. But, yes, definitely from North Carolina. Did you move around a lot? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, my dad got out shortly after I was born to prevent the moving around, not being able to have like a foundation, being yeah. around family, all of that. So no, I didn't move around as far as that. Where did you, so did you at least go to the same high school? Oh, yes. Yeah. So like yes. middle school and high school, it sounds like you were pretty stable somewhere. Yes. Um, Where were you living at the time? To... In Jacksonville, okay. I went to several different elementary schools. Yeah. I went to two different middle schools, but yeah. one high school. That's good. I think I think it's born to go to the exact same elementary, oh, middle, and high yes. school the whole way through. Even though that's considered traditional and normal, uh, you know, you got to put a little bit of spice yeah, in there. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you meet more people. I think you went to two middle schools? You yes. See? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. Like, I, I I did the same. I don't know how many elementaries, but middle school went right. to two. So you can kind of, you know, bring both of those worlds together once you do get to high school. So. Right. Correct. So you're someone I see that you, correct me if I'm wrong, you travel a lot. You're involved in many things. Recently, you went skydiving. Yes, I did. It was super fun. It was actually my second time. Really? And now I'm considering uh -huh. going a little bit further and becoming licensed. And doing it by yourself. Yes. So still thinking. What? Uh, so what drove you to do it the first time? Um, Adrenaline junkie. Mm. Um, Healthy adrenaline junkie. Let me put that out there. Yeah, so, good, good disclaimer. Yes. She's not doing heroin or anything like that. Uh, no. <laughs> Um, so I've always wanted to go skydiving at the time I was living here in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. It was, I think around 2016 mm -hmm. and, um, I went to a, a place that's local mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I love doing spontaneous things. Spontaneity yeah. is yeah. the way to my heart. So, uh, any people out there single? Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there too. All right. <laughs> Bing bong. <laughs> so did you did you go straight to the sky or did you do the what is it the eye dive the indoor oh, thing? Oh no, you know what? I don't even know if that was really big at that point. I don't even know. If, I don't know if there was a place here. There might have been. Yeah, but I know you got one in Concord Mills, but I think those in general are kind of fairly new. Right. Yeah. So yeah, no, you just go up. They give you a little disclaimer. Hey, yeah. this is a uh, your tandem uh -huh. that you're going to be with, yeah. um, and you just go up there about 12,000 feet. They open the door and they say, it's time to rock and roll. Let's get this thing going. You just jump out. Are you the type to count down or are you the type to just jump in the water with situations like that? They 
say they're going to count. I think a three second countdown, mm-hmm. but I'm like, let's just do this thing. There's no necessary. It's yeah, not necessary yeah. to count down. I, I'm the same. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's just jump straight in. Countdown is building up anticipation. And yeah, like, what are we doing? We, yeah. This plane ride was long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. So what was that like feeling and thrill and view like? Like going down, what was that whole experience like? Well, the view on the coast, the most recent jump was mm-hmm. much better. Okay. Um the jump here in the in this the area, land. it uh-huh. was it was grass, it was fields. Uh-huh. So there wasn't it wasn't very scenic. Yeah. Um it was still nice. It was my first time jumping. Um, but as far as the jump most recent on the coast of North Carolina, mm-hmm. it was beautiful to be able to jump right over mm-hmm. the water, right over wow. the beach. It was super cold, yeah. but it was beautiful nonetheless. And the free fall is the best part. Yeah. See, when you're just, dropping. Just so does it feel like how we envision free falling in our dreams? It is not like that. It is not. A lot of people have asked that question. What does it feel like? Does it feel like you're falling? And mm-hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. It just, you're just there. Okay. It just felt like you're just existing in the air. Yeah, just. While simultaneously Getting closer, closer, closer to the to ground. The, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. Yeah, it's on my bucket list. I do want to try it. I might do it for my 30th. Who knows? It's a must. Yeah. So let's talk about YouTube. Okay. Uh, your YouTube, your esthetician journey on YouTube to this day started seven years ago. Oh my gosh. Yes. I suppose so. Yep. Sound about right. I know. So I did my research. Okay. <laughs> to the point where we are now. So I just want to talk about, you know, how did this whole thing even start? Well, um, how it started was really just... Um, my love in creativity, uh, doing makeup. And I really enjoyed for a long time just learning how to do my own makeup, learning mm-hmm. how to perfect the way that I wanted my makeup to look. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, it was very popular for women to apply, like the dramatic eyeliner, the dramatic eyeshadow, all this heavy contour and mm-hmm. all that. So that was like the look then. Okay. Um, I also really enjoy doing special effects makeup for Halloween. So a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you should get on YouTube. You should do this. You should do that. And I never really considered it before then. It was just something I enjoyed doing and maybe posting pictures on Instagram. Okay. Um, So I finally decided to get a camera and to get a light. And that's where it started. So it just started with a camera and a light. You didn't have and to do up. a whole bunch of extra, like do a whole bunch of research. And I say that because I forgot the proper term of it, but it's like a thing where people want to start on YouTube or want to start creating content, but they feel they need this equipment, that equipment. You know what I mean? Oh, I got to know how to do this, know how to do that. Like they try to put all these things together before even just starting. I think it's a, a way people kind of prevent themselves from mm. succeeding mm. Um, because people are always like, oh, I just need to learn. What do you need to learn? Yeah. What do you need to learn? Yeah. Just do it. That's <laughs> Just how you learn. Do yeah, it. You, well, you learn through experience. Exactly. You learn through actually doing it. So at what point did it become, I actually have like a passion towards this and it's actually gaining traction. Like when did that settle in and how did you react off of that? I think it's still settling. Really? I don't know. I don't, I don't like I social media has changed. I think that's the biggest pill to swallow mm-hmm. and the biggest um obstacle that a lot of content creators, influencers, um, have to adjust with the times. Mm. So at that time I was creating content solely on YouTube and I would cross promote it on Instagram mm-hmm. to kind of bring those followers over to my YouTube channel. Yeah. And um then came along certain platforms like Musically, Musically eventually transformed into TikTok. TikTok. Um before then we had Vine, before, you know, it was yeah. a lot of different platforms yeah. where sometimes the content didn't you know, cross over or those followers didn't cross over. So for me, yes, I do have a passion for working online, doing digital work, digital influence. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still like an everyday process where I'm like, oh my goodness, like, okay, this is popular now. So now I have to 
kind of reorganize things and direct, you know, a different way, whether it be vertical content, horizontal content. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I, I like I like that you mentioned that um, you started off by saying social media is changing. And I imagine when you first saw the change years ago, it was kind of subtle. But now it's like every week. Yes. <laughs> there's some yes. type of change that you have to get adjusted to. It is. And I like that you did emphasize that you make sure that you adjust in the proper ways with how it's going. Yes. Because social media with anything, a thing that can keep people stagnant, whether it's through stubbornness or in denial, is adapting with mm -hmm. the change that can keep you stuck in the mud. So right now... Right now, what's your focus more so on? Because you mentioned how when you first started, you tried to, or you drew in maybe followers from IG to YouTube. That's where I'm at right now. Because at first I would just do everything on IG and TikTok and Facebook Reels, mm. which is cool. I have stuff with a lot of views, but this year I'm trying to dial in on YouTube because I think that's what's... First, that has the best, what, SEO? Because you got I Google. I don't know why. Why do I want to focus on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Because I hear this so often. Mm -hmm. People, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for one, the money. Just to be fully transparent, I don't monetize from IG. Okay. Uh, they took away the bonus reels. I was just talking about that. Yeah. Literally yesterday or day before yesterday. Yeah. Well, did you get it at one point before they cut it off? Yes. Oh, damn. <laughs> yes. So do they you know, know why they, do you know why they cut it off? I don't. Maybe yeah. to have people uh more more loyalty on that platform mm -hmm. to draw people in to create more content, push more content. Mm -hmm. It makes them more money. People are staying on the app longer. Yeah. Um and TikTok has a a a brand partnership um like influencer program mm -hmm. so but you have to meet certain requirements you have mm -hmm. to have a certain amount of followers you have to post consistently for the most part there's just certain things certain requirements as well as every platform you know uh, youtube is the most notorious platform for having requirements to be able to monetize yeah <clears throat> um and that has changed over the years um i just uh, i just reached the one on youtube like, congratulations thank you thank you just reached that one. Um, the TikTok one, what, like you said, it's the brand, it's a brand partnership and so it's like, type thing? Yeah, so it's their, um, it's actually their influencer program to be able to monetize your content. Okay. You have to have, I believe it's 10,000 okay. followers on TikTok. And that's, that sounds about right, because you need 10K on TikTok to go live, well, to, to use their um, live studio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so you need ten thousand, and is is it pretty much like how bonus on reels for IG was? Like, you more? know what? I think it's more so along the lines of how closer to YouTube, okay. um, getting paid according to viewership, mm -hmm. um, also getting paid. I know they offer um, ads, I believe. Yeah, YouTube. I mean, not YouTube. Um, Instagram offers ads as well on your content to be able to monetize, but right. they have to send you the invitation. Mm -hmm. And is that, I think that's like sporadic as opposed to it being by certain criteria. Cause I'm like, yes. you'll see someone that has maybe less followers than you who got that invitation and you sitting like, yo, what, what I was, I, it? I was very, that's how I was when I, um, when they had started the Instagram reel, uh, the, the, the real bonuses. Yeah. And, I was like, one of my pages got it, and then it took a few weeks for the other page to get mm. it too. And I'm like, I wonder how they are doing this. Like, yeah. how is this rolling out? Yeah. But I think at the time it was pretty random because I have a friend. Uh, shout out to Fifty Fitch. He's you know his comedy his comedy skits on IG are amazing. His following is like I think he's like close to half a million or something like that. But he said, like, at one point he he didn't have it, but people with less followers than him did have it. And then once he got it, they took it away. For It was very random and weird yes. how their algorithm is moving towards that. Like you said, I want to know, like, the exact criteria and specifications for how and who they rolled that out to. Cause right. It just isn't making any sense. Yeah. So Facebook does have ads on Reels at the moment. Okay. So it's kind of like, you know, the bonus reels type thing. So mm -hmm. I've been getting paid a little bit off of my Facebook videos, but 
my Facebook videos don't gain because, you know, when it's what meta, which is Facebook and Instagram together. So when I post on Instagram, it automatically goes over to Facebook. Mm-hmm. So they're doing decent. But I'm like, damn, if I had the IG numbers to get paid off of, like, yo, I'd make decent chicken. Yes, you know I mean? yes. I wonder, I, I would love to know what they have planned yeah. for. Yeah, we got to research. Um, but to go back to your initial initial question of why I want to focus more on YouTube, one, because one thing I noticed is that when I go to YouTube and I type in something, first the SEO, the search engine optimization, I think it is, you know, YouTube is partnered with Google. So you can type something on Google and it'll pull up a YouTube video. Right. You know, and people, when you want to know how to do something, where do we go? We go to YouTube. That's how, you know, your esthetician brand, you know, right. help out. And people, women wanted to know how to do makeup and men too. You know, all all the letters. All we, yeah, yeah, we accept all the letters. <laughs> so, you know, the, the how to. So I think the search optimization was greater on YouTube. And another thing is you may type in something and find a video from nine, ten years ago. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You know what if, I mean? If the numbers are right and there is still getting active, you know, mm-hmm. viewership, yeah. they'll push it still. Yeah. And then, again, you get paid from no videos. Uh, so yes. why not get paid from stuff that's, that's years bold. old and uh, as opposed to IG, which I'm more so engaged on. IG, it'll have stuff out and it'll do great. But it kind of just dies down after a mm-hmm. while. And one thing I need to get better at is repurposing my content. I'm terrible with that. Oh, I am too. Yeah. And for those who don't know, that's pretty much just recycling your content. Because if something blows up once, it should be able to blow up again. Yes. And I'm just... The terrible. algorithm is there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just terrible with that. But, you know, I'll have a video that maybe get 900 million, 2 million views. It does good. But then after a few months, that's it. Yeah. It doesn't grow anymore. So I just think there's more opportunity for old content to grow on YouTube for one, plus you get paid on it for two, plus I think YouTube communities are a more loyal one. Let me ask you, compared to your YouTube and your social media communities and your audiences, which one would you say is more engaging? I think that has a lot to do with the creator. Mm -hmm. How engaging are you with your audience? Do you reply to comments? Do you, you know, reply in videos like, hey, look forward to this and actually hold up when you do the next video? Do you, you know, follow up from the last video that you said look forward to? Yeah. Um, for me, uh I, I comment back every now and again, not yeah. all the time, um, especially on YouTube, because like we said, there can be there's a video that may be six, seven years old. I'm not talking about that anymore. This yeah. person just may have come across this video, but to me, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not replying to you. This mm. is seven years old. Mm. So that's you from seven years ago. So that, you know, you're, you're not even in that same mindset. Yeah, I, I, it's it's the ugly truth. It's yeah. the ugly truth yeah. with with that. But I need to do better yeah. with you know engagement. But I'll get there, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you will. Maybe. We speak things into existence over here at Day okay. by Day. You definitely will. I foresee <laughs> it. One thing I hear a lot of people mention when they start in their YouTube journey or want to start is they want to get that plaque. You see the videos that people have the plaque right here front and center. I can't front. If I had one, I would put it right here as well. But <laughs> people see that and they want to chase that. So let me ask you, do you chase anything on YouTube? Have you ever chased like a certain amount of followers? Like what actually brought that you know, to keep going for you on YouTube where people now, they want to just chase subscribers. I should say, I said followers. Everyone wants to chase their first 10, 100,000 fo- subscribers to get that plaque. Um, for me, it was to reach the monetization mm-hmm. for the subscribers yeah. on YouTube. And once I reached that, I was like, okay, it'll be cool to get the plaque as well. But 100,000 subscribers, mm-hmm. For me, I was like, oh, my goodness, this this may take a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. But my channel began to grow pretty quickly because of the type of content that I was putting out. And once I did get to that subscriber number to get that, you know, first 100,000 subscriber plaque, I was super excited. And I was like, OK, this is this is good. But then reality for me kind of sat in where I'm like, oh, my goodness, the next one would be one million. And I'm mm. like, 
how am I gonna? <laughs> yeah. What in the world? I, I, I've got a lot of, lot of content and work to do because sometimes it can happen overnight for people, and sometimes some people have been on YouTube for ten plus years mm -hmm. and have not even reached one hundred thousand. Yeah. So for me now, I'm just riding the wave. I yeah. try not to put too much pressure on myself about how frequently I'm going to upload when I feel good and I'm feeling like in the creative spirit and, mm -hmm. and mindset, that's when I create and that's when I upload. I used to push myself to just create, 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 and it wasn't necessarily the best of what I knew that I could do. Yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm doing this differently now. I have to create when I'm in that space. Mm, so it's not like a set out schedule, like I have to do this this day, do this this day. It's when you feel... Yes, because I truly have times where I do not feel like being on camera and I do not feel like doing a voiceover. I just, I'm just i just not in that mindset or mm -hmm. that headspace. And so for me, I've, I've learned to recognize when I'm in that space and just kind of step back, maybe for a day or two or maybe a week or maybe two weeks. Um, and when I'm ready, I'm ready to come back and... Mm -hmm. That's what works best for me. Nice, nice. And at, at the end of the day, it sounds like it's less like stressful on your mental as well. Cause when you're just pushing yourself, you burn out. Very fast. And that's what was happening. I was having burnout so yeah. often. I was exhausted. And, you know, numbers can encourage you to do more or it can get to burnout very mm. fast. And so, you know, you put out so much work and you 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 put in so much work to see numbers that you aren't happy with. Yeah. But then that's where the, um, that's where, what's the word I'm looking for? Medulla oblongata. Okay. We could say that. No, that's not I'm the word. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, um, you know what? <laughs> I only know what that word is. Entitlement. From... Entitlement. Ah, okay. With creating content, mm -hmm. we are so entitled because we put so much those that we do put so much into our craft, mm -hmm. we are so entitled or we feel so much entitlement to have the viewers mm -hmm. and the viewership. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm doing so much work. I'm doing so much work, yeah. um, you know, editing, filming, you know, creating, brainstorming, yeah. all of this work. Why is it not giving back to me what I put out? Mm -hmm. That's the ugly reality. Yeah. But... Just learning how, you know, when and how to create will. Yeah. Finding find what's best for you. But I do like how you, you know, mentioned literally what's best for you, not what's best for the schedule, oh, for no. the algorithm. How often, roughly, do you post on YouTube? Oh, my goodness. I haven't posted a YouTube long form video, not mm -hmm. like a YouTube short, mm -hmm. in maybe a month. Okay. So... It can get times where I'm like, no, I have not posted up there. Yeah. And then I pop back in and uh -huh. then I'll get in a mood. Yeah. Like for December, I really thought that I was going to be successful at Vlogmas. Mm. You know how many videos I uploaded? Of vlogs? How many? Two. How have they performed? Not good. Mm. Why do you think <laughs> that is? Oh, it's definitely because it's the gaps. It mm. is the gaps and stepping away from social media. Um, and social media platforms, whether it be YouTube, TikTok, uh, um, Twitter, mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. they tend to reward those that post more. Consistently. They want you to post, like, say, for instance, I've heard numerous things from... People who have huge followings on TikTok and then people who work with for TikTok mm -hmm. are like, no, we want people to post around three to four times a day. That mm -hmm. is not who I am. Yeah. I'm not posting three to four times a day. Yeah, that's a lot. Yes. That is a lot. I do some, me personally, and I'm, I'm like I said, I'm micro at this point. I'll do, I will say this, how you said how they want it to be consistent. When I do post, when I do go like, let's say three days and each of those three days I post two reels, then I do notice that they all get cycled more and more and more and more yes. when it's, you know, uh, uh, multiple of them. But again, that can get tiresome. Like how you be like, I'll post, but like, if it's like, okay, I just went four days of posting twice a day, I'm tired. 
I'll go another three days without posting nothing. Like, even though people can get drawn in, it's kind of like a high, right? When you see the engagement going up, you see, you know, artists, actors, people that are engaging with your stuff, you'll be like, damn, and it'll keep you to keep going. But then you realize, yo, I'm literally burning myself out. Like, how long can you keep it up? Ultimately, I like you're saying cater to yourself and your brand before the audience and the numbers. I think that's important. Yes. Put yourself first. And I know mm -hmm. that's it's hard to explain and get that registered to people who are just beginning because they're so amped up, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Having that, you know, excitement. Yeah. But you do not want to burn through yeah. that excitement. Yeah. And I think it's selfish to your brand when you do that. You know, because you want to, you know, be able to be your best self, be well rested, be energetic, be passionate towards shooting that day like you do. Being happy. Yes. Let's talk about the partnership part of the game. OK. One thing that I do see on your social media profiles is that you're engaged with a lot of brand partnerships. Mm -hmm. And today I think that's getting larger and larger because these big brands are focusing on UGC creators and realizing that we control the juice, mm -hmm. right? It's not newspapers. It's not news channels. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like they're going straight to creators now as opposed to these large companies. So how did you get involved with, you know, the partnership game brand? And even today, like what's your ap approach towards it? Um, So beginning when I can, uh, as far as thinking back when I first was doing YouTube videos, mm -hmm. a lot of brands reach out and they want to gift you mm -hmm. um, in exchange for content. Um, what, earlier. What do you mean by that? Like no payment. Oh, <laughs> just give you free stuff. Right. Okay. You know, earlier on, that was cool. That right. was fun. You don't really know much was as far as myself. I didn't know much about negotiating yeah. terms and conditions. Um, now it's a totally different ball game. I don't want any gifts mm -hmm. unless it's a vacation. Okay. Like we right. can, okay, yeah. we talking yeah. different things yeah. now. Yeah. But as far as product, yeah. I do not. I, I can really go without it. I have way too many products, yeah. you know, whether it be skincare, makeup, clothes, it's just enough is enough. Right. Um, I have a lot of things. I don't need any more things. Uh so and things don't pay the bills unless you sell them or do something else with it, yeah. which I don't do. That's extra work. Yes. So uh, as far as negotiating, I have reached out to brands mm -hmm. and um, a mo majority of the time they re they're reaching out to me. So yeah. whether it be through DMs or emails. What are some tips you have for negotiating? And again, I'm I'm getting a, I'm getting a class right now because I just started being involved with brand partnerships mm -hmm. and they reached out to me. Uh, I need to start being on the offense and reach out to some. But they reached out to me and they'll say, hey. You know, we would love for, you know, this to be in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. Here's, you know, what's your budget or here's our budget. Mm -hmm. And then me, since it was, especially my first one, I just bit. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, bet, let's do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm We've hyped. We've all been there. Yeah, like I'm hyped. So, okay, bet, let's do it. I'm not going to say how much it was, but it wasn't a right. whole lot. But right. I'm on my third now and I have noticed it's increased mm -hmm. each time. But each of those three times, I've never negotiated. I kind of just took it. I want to get better with my negotiating game as far as brand partnerships. Mm -hmm. So what are just some, what's some advice that you have just like <laughs> with negotiating and, you know, kind of stepping on your worth? Yes. So one, knowing what you bring, knowing what you bring, whether it is a podcast, whether it's you know, creating content mm -hmm. or creating content that you post or UGC creator content, whether you're providing it to them mm -hmm. and you never post it. Yeah. Um, knowing what your face and your likeliness brings is number one. If you don't understand your analytics, if there's a person that's just starting out and they've had tremendous success early on, mm -hmm. understand your analytics. That is the number one thing. Um, there are so many different websites and platforms that allow you to put in your social media handles mm -hmm. and can give you a range on the low end, the medium and high end of what creators that have these numbers mm -hmm. and algorithm um, 
charge. Really? Yes. What, what's the name of one? Or? So one that I have been using from the very beginning is Social Blue Book. Okay. They have changed to where they are more on a subscription base now. They the were not is like all that. Over. Listen, I'm like, geez, this is a website all providing over. information, yeah. but yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um. So that platform is really good. That is only that is really the only one that I have been familiar with over all this time of mm -hmm. you know platforms changing, numbers yeah. increasing, maybe staying stagnant. That is what I use. Mm -hmm. um, and once I have that, I kind of go from there. Um, AI is our best friend. Yeah. So I use a lot of AI when it comes to formulating emails, um, wording emails. You want to come across as a professional. Right. Um, also creating a media kit, which is really easy. I can plug my ebook in. Please do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I do have an ebook that's available for content creators or aspiring content creators, social media influencers, um, UGC creators, whatever niche you want to go into. Mm -hmm. And it provides so much information, some of the information that I'm sharing here, and mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be able to share it on your platform. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing um, it. I absolutely. Because I know this is just the tip of the iceberg, but I've like you know learned a lot this past 30 minutes, so I appreciate it. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And um, so uh, within my ebook, I do have so many templates of one, the cover page that some businesses may be looking for the media kit where you can plug in your pictures, your rates, your contact information, as well as a template for those creators that have no clue how to write up an email. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what your category or genre of content is, whether it's gaming, beauty, travel, foodie, yeah. um, tech, it has a template for every person. Yeah. Um, so what is a media kit exactly? So it provides your face or mm -hmm. your brand's face. Um, it also gives a brief summary of the content that you create mm -hmm. or your brand is creating. Um, also a few pictures, just a, a little bit of your analytics. Uh, is your content more male audience, female audience? Yeah. Is it pretty equal? Um, how is your engagements or how many unique visitors do you typically have in a month or in a week or, you know, whatever time frame yeah. brands that that's something that brands want to know. Companies want to know that yeah. um, they will do a little bit of research. Some brands do. Some mm -hmm. brands do do a little research and then they'll reach out to you. That yeah. way, you know, they know that you and the brand align. OK, Um but yeah, it just gives. I don't ever put price points on my media kit because mm -hmm. that can change. Yeah. So I yeah. always just put if you want photos, video content, or maybe you want a package deal. You want to we want to create some create something together. We need to mm -hmm. negotiate. I always have to negotiate up there. Okay. Provide my email, phone number. That's all they need. Wow. And. All of this plus more info is found in your ebook. The ebook's out now. Yes. Where can it be found it at? It is. So you can go to my Instagram, Glam by Leah Lee mm -hmm. or Leah Lee, and it is in my bio. And it says it right there. You can click on the little direct me, mm -hmm. and it's the first link. It says the Social Media 2024 ebook. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Damn. I done learned about two years worth of. <sighs> knowledge just now this past 30 minutes you're doing the damn thing Lee. thank you you're thank welcome. you i really appreciate it yeah you mentioned it earlier uh i believe so are you single i am yeah. are you dating i'm open to it What's, i'm picky you're picky, picky. well every, no one should settle no i'm not saying settler. that but you know how some people are like okay you might have to get realistic with these standards now i do not have a checklist I'm not that person. That they have to check, that they have to acquire. Well, let's talk about what they, what's, let's talk about some red flags, some turn offs. Since you are picky, what are you picky towards being against? Oh, man. Do I really want to say this on camera? Please do. And she's not saying this for y'all dudes to act the opposite just to try to attract her. Let me just say that first and foremost. Because dudes will hear a checklist of a woman and be like, oh, all right, they shapeshift. 
to that just to try to get her. Like, no. Oh, my gosh. Right. That's very true. So, yeah. yes, number one, being yourself. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. Yeah. Let's let's be honest because the, the true self will show itself eventually. Oh, so, you know, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. be let's be ourselves. Especially with social media. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. So many fraudulent activities happening. But um I say be yourself. That's number one that can either encourage or discourage someone right from the beginning, which I feel like is fair. Yeah. Have nope. you ever caught someone in the act of being fraud? Nope. Okay. I don't think so. All right. No. All right, continue. Um and you know what? I don't want to say this because I know it is it's a lot of backlash. It's a lot of it's a sensitive topic. But I would prefer someone that does not have children because I don't have children. Why is that a sensitive topic though? Because I, I mean, just I'm, I'm feel like some people are like Go ahead. I just know that you know it's it's I just feel like it's one of those sensitive things where people are like it kind of turned their nose up like, oh, okay. And they're like, well, who doesn't have kids now, especially once you reach a certain age? And I know. think that I think that shit is selfish. I'm I'm gonna turn up a little bit. I think that's selfish if someone if it's if it's if people turn their nose up to you saying that you don't want to date someone with kids because you don't have kids. Now, vice versa. Say you had two kids and you're like, I only want to date men with no kids or only want to date men yeah, with no kids. That's okay with me. That's a slight turn up to the nose. But when people with no kids mention that, for one, like we're proud that we don't have kids or we don't want to date someone with no kids, it's the people with kids that get upset at that and people with kids from people that they kind of regret that get upset with that that shit is selfish yes that is very very selfish so no i'm i mean i'm with you like as far as i pref i say i prefer a woman with no kids now i'm a realist i would not i i i, I could see myself Falling for a woman with a child or two. I could see that happening because I'm a realist. I grew up with stepdads my life, and you know, one in particular really shaped shit, really contributed towards the man that I am today. So I don't, you know, just turn a blind eye to that. But that is my preference. And I don't think that's selfish on any means. Okay. So stand ten toes on that shit, girl. I do. I man. just don't say it public yeah. publicly. Yeah, because... I, I get you. I get you. <sighs> what else we got? <laughs> Oh, man. As far as red flags, oh, it, it probably should be more important things. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's the very first thing that I'm like, oh, OK, I don't need to know anything, anything else. OK. What, the kids? Yes. So what I'm if just it's a, like. OK, so what if it's a man y'all meet, y'all right, does, does he in the building? Y'all forgot to properly introduce her. Uh, Desi's featured today. She's limping a little bit. Hopefully she's all right. So let's say it's a guy you meet, you find him attractive. The energy's on point. Y'all have a great time. Let's say y'all meet up for an official date this time around. Y'all go on a date. Boom. Date goes great. The vibes is on point. You really like this dude, Leah. And you, and you ask him, do you have kids? He drops the bomb. I would have found that out on the first premature date. How so? Because I would ask. Mm -hmm. I, I need to know this information before okay. I uh, get too happy. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, good for you for, for doing that, you know, early work. Yeah. Okay. So it's a dude on the surface. You like, damn, he look good. His vibes is on point, but he has kids. Is it just, does he not even get the number at that point? Like what happens once he tells you? He told me before. <sighs> I don't yeah. know. This is shallow, but it depends on how good he look. What he got going on? <laughs> like, if I right. find him attractive, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. It sounds like you'd cave in. You no, ever, you ever no. dealt with a dude that had kids? Uh, no. Okay. You sure? That was no. a long. That was a long. I know it was. I had to. Okay, so we talking like. We talking dated with intention or we were just meeting up and having fun? Dated with intention. No. Okay. 
Yeah, me and having fun, that's, that's different. Yeah, that's uh, not, I yeah. don't consider that dating. Nah, nah. I've never seriously dated anyone with children either. Yeah, I wouldn't. Like you said, you may we we do, speaking. It is it is kind of a slight selfish feeling, but it I, is yeah, it it is what it is. I've it never is. I've never like gone gotten serious with anyone with kids neither. Mm-hmm. Like if I found out she had kids, I wouldn't allow myself to get that shit. Yes, I got to nip it in the bud. All right, I think I can't talk to you anymore. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. We want our kids to be their first kids. There's nothing wrong with that. Why do you though? Why do I what? Why do you prefer your children to be their first children as well? Because, I mean, that goes into just, like, I want that experience to be together, like yeah. a union. Like, yeah. this is our first time doing this together. Yeah. It's a big deal. I don't want somebody that's like, yeah, I've been through this already. And be like, mm. Mm. Mm, not with me, you haven't. Yeah. So. That is a big deal. Okay, those are some decent red flags. Let's talk about this. You're someone, you're an esthetician. You take your hygiene serious. Right, you got nice skin, nice teeth. Thank you. Right, clean cut and everything. So, what are some hygiene red flags for men? Breath. Uh, oh my goodness, hygiene in general. Love like, mouth. yes, <laughs> dental hygiene is key yeah. because I am um, very particular about kissing. Mm. I do not kiss, Mm-mm. but you don't. It, in general, you don't kiss. I like if I'm in a relationship, then you'll kiss, right? I gotta really be feeling you to be kissing, like slobbing you down. Okay. I really gotta trust what is, even if it's early. Like I have, it, it, it has to be. I'm not saying I'm <gasps> like just kissing any and every woman out here, but what's the reason that you have to be in such a serious situation first before you take kissing serious? think it's serious but like because even if it's dating even if it's casual even if it is whatever it is Mm -hmm. I do not want somebody that is kissing other people or having their mouth on somebody else's body parts Mm -hmm. well exclusively dating say you and someone else are exclusively dating but it's early sounds like you still want to kiss them yeah no okay why is that because I just Mentally, I'm like, listen, yeah. I keep my oral hygiene, body hygiene yeah, up there. Did you have some type of like childhood trauma experience with no, kissing? No, I'm just it? very particular. Like, okay. you got to match me or be better. Like, I got to be like, damn, I need to up my, what am I doing? Yeah. And I know I do a lot. Yeah. So if somebody can challenge me in there, I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. You might could get a kiss. All right. All right. So... <laughs> Oral hygiene, seriously, I think teeth is the first thing. People, ah, man. It's a hard, yeah. it's a hard deal breaker. Yeah, yeah. Same. Especially it, as adults. Yeah. Because we can spend money on so many different things, but if a person can't, or if they choose not to take care of certain things. I'm no, like, okay. Yeah, no, because it'd be people with, <laughs> it'd be people in clubs and all types of shit and they gum swole and teeth yellow. So they can, because them club bottles be costing, what, three, four hundred dollars. So, you know, if you got insurance, then that's getting a few cavities filled plus a full <laughs> clean. That's all of that. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah, it's definitely by choice. I think, I, me personally, I'm I'm spending a bag on my teeth before anything. Yeah. I don't care. Yes. Like, that's one thing I've never played around with. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's the first thing people see. Mm-hmm. If you got bad teeth, they're going to see that. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. All right, what else we got? So, we got Okay, oral, yeah. Oral. So, hygiene, oral, mm-hmm. you know, regular hygiene. Mm-hmm. Um. What was, run the question back one more time. I was just pretty much asking, what are some hygiene red flags for? Oh, me? Okay, okay. Um, clean ears. Mm. Clean ears, like fingernails. Now, I'm not saying you have to go get go to the nail salon or do anything like that, right. but make sure they neat and yeah. short. Yeah, toenails too. Yeah, I love nice feet. Yeah, I don't have a foot fetish or feet fetish but sounds like you're in the neighborhood though a little (laughs) but nice feet nice feet do you give feet massages yes if yeah yeah, if it's there right Mm -hmm. okay 
Nice. It's usually complete opposite, like, especially with women towards men feet. Men, a lot of men have feet fetishes. But usually, like, when I speak to women in regards to men, they're like, no, don't put your damn feet near me. Mm -mm. Like, why would you say You that? got nice feet. You got nice feet. It's Even just like feet. a clean, manicure individual. It's like, I, I, I would touch every part of the body. Nice. 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 I like that. All right, cool. So, overall, you being someone... Who, do you travel a lot? It seems like you do. Do you travel a lot? I I, I travel okay. okay. I want to say a lot. So you travel okay. <laughs> <laughs> Social media influencer. You know, you have a personal and professional brand. Like, you, since you're technically an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. could you date someone with a nine to five or what he has to be an entrepreneur as well? Uh, yes, I could date someone who has a nine to five. That's fine. Yeah. That's because a lot of women, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, which is the weird part, says they couldn't date dudes with nine to five for scheduling reasons. Mm. They say, I want to be able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, when really, if he's a successful owner or CEO of a company or brand, like the time isn't that much. You know, they have even think. less time. Exactly, which I think people get misconstrued. But um, yeah, that's just a thing that a lot of women, again, whether they are an entrepreneur themselves or not, some work at Walmart and say they couldn't date a dude with nine to five. No knock on Walmart. I'm just saying what it is. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted your take on that because some people say they. Yes, I yes I could I could date someone who has a nine to five. Um, have you before? No. Mm. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's a new day. It's 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try new things. Try new things. You can see it happening. So yes, I definitely I definitely could see that happening. Um and I mean they don't work every single day. Nah. As long as they have a pretty set schedule, like mm -hmm. that doesn't fluctuate or may maybe every once in a while, that's okay. Yeah. It's life. Things happen. Um, but yeah, I could see that. All right. So why you very attractive? You have a good personal, a personal and professional brand going for yourself. Like you're out there on social medias. Why are you single? Oh my god, I knew that was coming. That's why I started smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I god. gotta ask, Leah. I gotta Ooh, ask. Oh, without giving too many details. Um. My most recent relationship mm -hmm. is obviously why uh, I'm single now. Um, How long ago did this end? Oh, you want details. Yes, oh, uh, it was at the end of last year. 23 or mm -hmm. 22? 23. The end of 23? Yes. You said that to make it sound like it was a long time ago. That was only two <laughs> months ago. I'm not giving specific yeah, you ain't, you ain't, well, I only ask because that's still fairly new. Oh, yeah. So it's not like you've been on the market for like oh, no. a long ass time. No, or anything but like any that. time in today's time feels like a long time, yeah. uh, especially if it was a long, uh, long time relationship, which it was. Um, How many years? Seven. That is a long ass time. Right. And y'all been apart for two, three months? I gotta ask. In the in the I, I gotta ask, are y'all really apart? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. So no matter what, ain't no way it's being reconnected. Is that what oh, you're saying? Oh no, yeah. Okay. No. All right, mm -mm. cool, cool, cool. Okay. Are you still healing from that? They say it takes like yes, six or twelve months. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm not like sad down in the dumps yeah, or course, anything like that. Human nature. Right. So just, you know what I mean? Like naturally. So okay, so since you are somewhat in like the stage of still Kind of, you know, getting yourself together after that. Like I said, I think research says it takes six to 12 months, especially after seven years. So, like, are you even, like, pressed for dating at the moment? Not really. Um, no. And recently moving back to North Carolina has mm -hmm. been a crazy transition mm -hmm. and adjustment. Yeah. I'm still adjusting. Yeah. Um, I was in South Florida for those seven years. That's and a big Yes. Yeah. Completely different. Economy is different. My life is different. I'm different. Yeah. So I'm still adjusting. Yeah. What part of South Florida? I was in, when I first moved there, I was on South Beach. So I was in Miami, Miami. Dade. Then I moved to Broward. 
And my last area where I was living was Boca Raton. So it was Palm Beach County. Okay, Palm Beach. Yeah, damn, going from, oof. Yeah. I, I, I've i never been to Miami, but like I could, I just know myself. I'm pretty cool, calm, collected. I got discipline. Yeah, I'm everybody lit. say that until they go somewhere like. <laughs> hey, right, just living out there. I, I know I would wild out. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. Like, and I ask because you see, and I know people personally that did this, they'll go from like relationship to relationship. I enjoyed, um, I, the only time that I can relate back to was before my last relationship. When mm-hmm. I was single, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I am not the person who always needs to be or around or have someone around. I enjoy living alone. I enjoy my space. Um, I enjoy if I want to have company or not have company. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm still, you know, realizing that that still is very much the case. Mm-hmm. So you we'll got to be see. comfortable in your own space. Some people I, are not. And that's the reason why they be so <laughs> pressed to be with someone because they're not comfortable in their own space. They get anxiety when they're alone. So they just, you know, accept the first person that comes their way, whether they're healthy for them or not. Right. And then that's just a whole nother mess because they're bringing their luggage and toxicity to that situation on top of it being an unhealthy situation. It's just a mess. <sighs> yeah, it is. It is the easiest way to put it. And I'm not ready or going to jump into anything. I feel that. Do you want to get married? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've <laughs> noticed that a lot of us millennials say that. Like, there's no clear cut answer. It really isn't. If I was to get married, I would be okay with non traditional things. Um, I'm sorry. You said if you weren't to get married, you would be all right with non-traditional. If things? I if I was to What's get married, man? I would be okay with non-traditional Such ways, as? certain things, okay, certain living situations. Um, I would be okay with not always being in the same bedroom. Um, some other things as well. That that person would learn eventually. Okay, so that's <laughs> I would the, share. So that game is to be sold, not to be told. Uh, on wax. Yes, All right, I respect yes. it. I respect it. Uh, people do that. Like when you said not in the same bedroom, you'll see like couples, married couples that have sep- whole separate houses. And that's why I say that I'm super comfortable being in my own space mm-hmm. and being my own company. Yeah. Um. Could you see yourself doing that? Like, not being in the same... Like, y'all, of course, spend a night with each other anytime you want, but having a different house from your husband? I don't know if I would go so far to say that. Just because expenses, I don't think it would make much sense. Mm. But... Well, then let's separate bedrooms. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. At least four bedrooms so I could have my own space. He would have his own space. And maybe a guest bedroom and an office. So... That's in a separate bedroom as far as, like, y'all don't sleep in the same bed every night. You're cool with that? We might share a bed every now and again. Yeah, of but course. I mean, sure, you know. <sighs> Got to do that. I get hot. Night. You get hot? <laughs> do you like sleeping in the cold? Yes. Fan on if there's a ceiling fan, hopefully. Yeah. Cold. You don't ever get sick? No. Nope. Maybe Not my... from that, uh, no. Maybe it's my immune system. You can't sleep under a fan? I can't sleep in the cold at all. Like, I, I like <laughs> I like my room to be at least 75 when I sleep. <laughs> yeah. Are you joking? No, I'm so serious. <laughs> you can check my thermostat after this downstairs. I like it hot when I'm sleeping. Do you sleep with covers? Yeah. On you? Yeah. I still need that feeling. But if it gets too hot, I'll take the covers off and just lay out. But I need it hot. And luckily, I have a dog that's a heat dog. She likes the heat, too. So Does she sleep with you? Hell no. Uh, In my bed? Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. Listen, I love my dog. I'm a dog person. I consider myself a dog whisperer. I think dogs, for the most part, are better than humans. But I am not one of them people that's letting my dog in my bed, on my sofa, or in my kitchen. Okay. It sounds like you do one of at least two. Which ones do you do out of those three? Oreo is allowed to go anywhere as long as I'm not cooking. Mm-hmm. He can be in the kitchen. Yeah, every every black every black dog owner 
know, or every dog that's owned by a black person knows the kitchen rule. Yes. Yeah, we lay that down. That line. You got to get out. Surrender. But yes, he sleeps with me. And I'm, I'm okay with that because he's so little. I was just like, that's a little ass dog. Yes. For those who don't know, she has a miniature. Sh- Dotson. It? Dotson. Yes. And the 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 Wiener Schnitzel dog. Okay. I was not trying to come with your dog. It is a Wiener dog. <laughs> yes. Right? I was just trying to be. Funny. Yeah, he's a hot dog. So and know. he's so cute and yeah. so little. Yeah, and so adorable. And... I know you still like yeah no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just me. Plus, Desi sheds a lot. Yes. Like she sheds a lot, which you would is have to have white linen, so it didn't show. Ah, but it'll smell. She stinks too. So well, the, so those furs, it, everywhere her furs lays, like if I don't wash her, it's, it's sticking in there. Well, I'm, that's another thing with hygiene. Like, mm-hmm. you got to wash your pillowcases and sheets and comforters. Absolutely. Often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With her, though, I would have to do it every day. I'm not doing that. Okay, well, sorry, girl. Yeah, but still, you know, what, what's your dog's name again? Oreo? Mm-hmm. God bless you and Oreo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all, y'all. And I imagine Thank it's good you. sleep, though. Sleeping with a dog, I do imagine it's good sleep. Especially naps. It can be. It can. Yeah. Nah, you get hot. Yeah. Nah, Des is too big and she stinks. But she does like the heat as, along with me. So um, that is good. What if... Do you like cats? What if the dude has like a cat? I like, love cats. Yeah? I love all animals. Oh, you're an animal person. What's your spirit animal? I don't think I have one. Come up with I one. I think... Come up with one? Mm-hmm. A cat. Why a cat? Because cats are fine being alone. They That's a good point. Um, are sassy. They want attention when they want it. When they don't, they don't. Mm-hmm. Same way. Very, very similar. Um, they don't take any ish from anybody. No animal, no person. <laughs> cats will score up with anybody. Anybody. And, you know, it is what it is. They always have that resting face. Yeah. I respect cats to the fullest. What, do I like them? I don't mind them, and I respect them. I won't say I like them because I like dogs. I can't picture them on the same spectrum, but I don't mind cats. I do respect them. What's your spirit animal? A bald eagle. And Why? Not, not because I'm bald. People think, oh, it's because you're bald and because you're an Eagles fan. No. A bald yeah. eagle because... Similar to you and cats, bald eagles are comfortable alone as well. I take bri- I take pride in being comfortable being by myself. You know, like out here, it's just, it's just me and Des out here. We just packed up and came out here. And I'm, I was comfortable enough to do that. Not a, a lot of people even tell me they couldn't mm-hmm. do that. And they are at the top of their food chain, besides humans, of course. But that's for every living existing thing on this planet including humans so they're at the top of their food chain and they like to be at the highest point they like to be elevated me for i I don't know why it is but i like to be high not like that no pun intended but i like to be at a high elevation level like when i go hiking i love being at the top skydiving skydiving exactly i want to go skydiving apartments like my apartment that i'm moving in next month i was like i need the top floor it's at the very top floor. I just like being high, like, like elevated. And bald eagles are always positioned at the, you know, top or close to the top of the mountain mm-hmm. that they're nesting in. So for those reasons, and they're just, I mean, they, you know, look very cool. You know what I'm saying? Very like, majestic. Very majestic. Serious. Yeah. Yeah. Majestic and, and serious and at the control. same time. Yeah. Like they don't do too much. They don't have to roar like lions and all that. You know what I mean? Like I consider myself an even keeled person, but very serious and confident as well. Just like an eagle, just like a bald eagle. So that's why that's my spirit animal. Nice. Yeah. Cats like to be high too. <laughs> they do. They do. We we <laughs> had uh, laid out bad. some good um good examples for spirit animals. I like yours. I appreciate it. And yeah. not just house domesticated cats, like lions, jaguars, you know. All You're sassy? Of them. All Class- of them. Classy, bougie, sassy? I'm not bougie. I don't think so. Is that in the song? Is that she said that? Classy, bougie, sassy? Mad? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I could see that in you. You're calm. You're a very calm, like, Thank spirit, you. but I could see. 
like something rubbing you the wrong way and you being on someone's ass. That's everybody. No, it ain't. Some people just take shit. Okay. Well, no. Yeah, I don't think that's everybody. Some people, a lot of, well, not even some, a lot of people just kind of go with the flow on things. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm mm. What do you have planned for the uh, rest of the weekend? Going back to Jacksonville, anything happening in Jacksonville? Uh, no, just work. Yeah. Work, 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 school. I'm in school online. Um, what for? Nursing. Uh-uh. And then hopefully a little further than that. Okay. Eventually. So will you still continue doing your social media influencing and YouTube while nursing? That's nine to five, right? Or would it be part time? No. So I actually don't plan on being bedside. Okay. I plan on um, it really come in full circle with me being an esthetician mm-hmm. and being able to do um, injectables and What's more. That? Injectables, what's that? So you know how a lot of people get fillers, mm-hmm. whether it be in their cheeks, their eyes. Yeah. You know, they have the mm, invasive and sometimes not invasive cosmetic procedures mm-hmm. that they're awake for. Mm. That's where I would come in. Okay. But that wouldn't be as like demanding time wise, like that some nurses oh, be working no. like twelve hour shifts. Oh and no, all that. it's much it's much more fun, much mm-hmm. more lightweight environment. Um, typically in a med spa mm-hmm. and or in my own practice, yeah. which is ultimately the plan. And much easier. Yeah. As far as, you know, um demand on the body. It's mm-hmm. much easier. What's your take on how you said like fillers and whatnot. What's your take on altering the body with cosmetic surgeries? Oh, I'm for it. Yeah. I'm for it. I'm for whatever um is a you know allows people to be happy and healthy. Um it's it's only looked at sideways when it goes a little bit too far, which mm-hmm. we all are very aware. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of people who have taken it a little bit too far. We've all seen botched. Um, and if we haven't seen that, we've seen it in real life. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm for it, whether it be cosmetic uh fillers or whether it be, you know, surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, I think nothing is wrong with it. Yeah, me neither. I'm not a fan of BBLs. Uh, but I mean, if someone just I don't know, if they want to get a little something cool, I mean, of course it's cool if I'm not saying it's not cool with me, like it's their body. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Just on a personal level. Uh I prefer natural bodies. Now, I will say this because I have a good friend who she just shared it on IG. Shout out to her. I'm not going to say her name, but she's had either two or three kids Mm -hmm. and she's going through a weight loss journey and she's killing it. And she mentioned how like her stomach, like when she loses the weight, like the bottom of her stomach, instead of like losing or depleting, it kind of like the skin hangs because the fat's leaving, but the skin stays there. So it's hanging. She was like, I know people, you know, are against like surgeries on it. I was like, I mean, like, yo, for one, again, I don't care. It's your body. But I was like, yo, that's it makes sense to me. You know what I'm saying? If you expressing your concern about it and obviously it would, you know, help with your confidence, like make you feel better with it. Then of course, you know what I'm saying, do that. Like, I don't think it's an end all be all with, you know what I'm saying, right. doing surgeries. And then women, y'all bodies are different from ours. You know what I yes. mean? Like y'all carry different muscle and different fat as opposed yes. to we do. So then that's why y'all do, you know, surgeries much more than us. Like you rarely see a dude get any type of, you know, cosmetic surgeries, even though I hear dudes be getting like I hear dudes be getting BBLs now. <laughs> And liposuction. And- I was just about to say that. Yes, men do get the BBLs, the ab etching, all of that. They get it. They now, get I'm a, it. Now I'm opposed to that. I am a hundred percent. Like if you if you if you ain't trying to really put in that work to get a six pack, then I mean you ain't even really going to appreciate it. And you're going to lose the fake one soon, or you're oh. going to have to keep going back to get the whatever the hell they oh, do. Oh my to goodness! It. Yes, could they you, are. Could you date a dude with a? So when you say BBL, like dudes actually getting their ass done BBL? Well, I think it's more so like 360 lipo. Okay. Where they're getting lipo sucked out from the back of the arms, from the oh. back, different areas. Damn. Um, like the muffin yeah. top area. You know, the love handles. They yeah. want all of that gone. Yeah. Um, so. Is there a limit? Could you date a dude that has any type of enhancements or cosmetic procedures? 
Is there any limit at all? Teeth. Teeth? You can veneers? get something done. I don't prefer veneers, mm -hmm. braces. Okay, so you just ain't getting your teeth fixed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's it. That's it? So no hair transplant? Oh, that's fine. All right. That's fine. BBL? It's lipo? Nah. Love it. You got to love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love yourself. <laughs> Be oh, yourself. Shit. Remember, that's the first thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you Be just say that. yourself. No, baby. You can't come up to me. You got lipo scars. But what if he says, but women got BBLs and they titties done all the time. What's wrong with What's wrong with me getting some work done? Ain't nothing wrong with it, but I don't want you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair I do enough. not. No. Have you or would you consider any procedures? Me? Personally? No. Nothing? Oh, nothing. Okay. I've had people mention the, the hair thing. Since I'm bald, but like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I don't think it nah, is. Nah, do your thing. But <laughs> I just, I, I've re since I've went bald, I've just received so many compliments that like I don't need to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm fit. You know, I work out, so like, I you know, my body keep like kind of matches my mm -hmm. bald head and my beard. Mm -hmm. I love the bald head beard combo on me personally. Now, some dudes have weird shaped heads or. <laughs> Some dudes just can't get over that hump, and I understand because it took me a year to take the hat off. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a year. Um, but when I did take that hat off, and the amount of grown ass women that were, I think it's very attractive. Yeah, I that do. Kept calling me handsome. Shh, that was a game changer. He's like, oh, hold up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I shaded Good for at you. Yeah, I shaded at 23. So I'm 23, 24, 25, got 30 to 32, 33-year-old women checking me out, calling me handsome. There's no more 20, 21-year-old women. I'm like, damn, hold up. This right. some shit, something shifted. Yes. And I ain't went back since. So I just, I don't need to, the hair-wise. And then body-wise, I'll take pride in self-discipline and working mm -hmm. out. So, like, I work out for, like, mental reasons, but the physical part is a bonus. Right. So, you know, I, I embrace all of that. So physically wise, I don't I just can't see myself getting lipo and nothing like that. I'm gonna just go harder with the cardio if I need to, you know, get cutter or okay. whatever. I don't know. That's I have a question. Yes. So I recently seen um it it was a, a piercer type of person, like somebody who does tattoos and piercings, mm -hmm. but a little um different type of piercings, like body modification. Okay. Are you familiar? Not really. Like, have you ever seen someone who has their tongue split? Yeah. Okay. okay so body yeah. like modification like yeah. that. Okay. So this guy implanted some type of silicone, mm -hmm. like rippled implant mm -hmm. right above his penis. Mm -hmm. And it was for the pleasure of a of woman. woman. Would you? Is that, would I do that? No. Would, would you consider I. anything? I would not. I mean, at that at that point, just you know, bring a toy out at okay. that at that point to you know simultaneously please her. Nah, that's <laughs> that. Much, I don't nah, nah. That's a bit much. Yeah, it is. That like this on, is always going to be. That there. sounds uncomfortable. Would you be all right then with a dude that had that modification? No, because huh? what was going through your head? Yeah. Why? Why? Ah, yeah, that's a little much. All right, since we're talking about it, what about a dude that has his penis pierced? I think they call that a Wood Nelson. I forgot, but... Or a Prince Albert. Prince Albert, that's what it's called. <laughs> okay, you know it, all right? There's a few other ones too, but no. Nah. No, thank you. That would scare me. Yeah. Well, is the reason to like feel good when it's inside a woman? Is that the reason they get it? That done? has nothing to do with a woman at that really? point. I mean, I wouldn't know. A penis piercing? Yeah. Is he trying to make a fashion statement at that point? I Is think he's just... just trying to make a statement in general. Okay. All and right. with that, the thought of that would make me like, mm. Mm -mm. just looking at it, I would be like, oh gosh, I got to get dressed. What about a man with his tongue pierced? No. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, no. Well, not. But his, his, the reason is he did it to make it feel good when giving fellatio. That ain't got nothing to do. No. Because mm -mm. the, the moments or the times that you're not doing that. It's just a tongue piercing chilling. No. Ew. I'm okay. All right. Uh, What about... 
I know the tongue's split in half. I imagine you say no to that. That's weird. And you're already kind of like iffy about kissing. So imagine kissing a dude, his tongue is split in half, and y'all get some tongue action going on, and you feel two tongues <laughs> in one. Would that turn you on or off? No. He would not even get a kiss. I would be... What if he hit it, though? What if you were dealing with a dude? He hit it. He had it together the whole time. When y'all finally kiss, he's like, I want to show you something. Y'all finally <laughs> kiss, and you feel two tongues on yours. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way that's going to get past me. That's different. That is. That is. Would you be open to it? Nah. Mm-mm. To splitting my tongue? No, to dating someone that, or being open. Is she, oh, to and that. she has her tongue split. Now, see, when you say dating, I think it the the two levels of dating: dating for a relationship and dating for fun. Dating for fun, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> why not? Let me see what that those tongues do. Not that tongue. Let me see what those tongues do. Why not? Oh my. Okay. But like my girlfriend leading to my wife. Nah. Right. You're gonna have to get that put back together. Nah, nah that's a little extra. Okay, I got one for you. This is the last one for you. Mm -hmm. Since we're speaking of enhancements. Height enhancement. Some dudes get like their knees like broke or whatever, some type of surgery to their legs, knees in the back of their legs where they add some inches onto them. So you're dealing with a dude who's 6'2", but you found out after a little time of dating that he's naturally 5'4". <laughs> Mm-mm. Nah. Mm-mm. What if he only added two inches to his height? Mm-mm. None at all. Yeah. Sounds like we're on the same page as far as certain modifications that are just like, eh, nah. Have you considered any type of modification, enhancement, or anything like that? Yes. I got a breast reduction last year, last March. Okay. So that's about it. Yeah. What was the reason, if you don't mind me asking? Because I wanted smaller breasts to mm -hmm. fit my body frame. Okay. I was always top heavy growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah. I always wanted to go through and have a breast reduction. Um, at the time where I was considering seriously, I was around maybe 19, 20. Mm. And the women in my family were all adamant, wait, wait until you have at least one child. Wait, just wait. Why is that? Why wait till a child? Um, Because having children just, you know, kind of in comparison to what you just said about your friend, mm -hmm. um, the body grows to, you know, help produce and take care of a child. Yeah. And then once it's the, you know, it goes back. It things change. Okay. So the biggest thing is, you know, that weight fluctuation can make mm. the breast larger and then they go back and then you're mm. like, okay, let me do this now that I've had a child. Okay. You know, so I possibly don't have to go through this again. Yeah. But I did it for my uh, 30th birthday present to myself. And I'm like, I don't have children. I'm not on the path to have any children. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this for myself this year. And that's what I did. Good for you. How do you feel afterwards? You know what? I love them, but I wish I would have went a little smaller. Went a little smaller. Okay. Can you go back for seconds or is it kind of like... Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, you can? Okay. Yes, yes, you can. But I, I have no intentions of doing that. Got you. Got you. Not now. Got you. Well... That's uh that's beautiful. Congratulations. I'm Thank glad you. it went well. I'm glad it was a healthy procedure. Yes. First and foremost. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Who have you been told that you look like? Oh my goodness. So many different people. Right now sitting here, I see Neil Long a little bit. Really? That's what I mostly see. Hmm. Like certain angles, like like when you're kinda like this way and the light is hitting right here. Like this? Yeah, I see oh, okay. Neil. <laughs> I see Neil. Who have you who have you heard? Oh my goodness, over the years I've heard, I think when I was a little smaller, like even less weight was mm -hmm. on me. This was years ago. I used to always hear Sierra. Mm -hmm. Um, times I've heard Kiki Palmer. I don't see that at all. I don't see Kiki. Um I've heard now this is a show that I'm familiar with because I hear family talking about it all mm -hmm. the time. There is a character, I don't know if this is her character name or her real name, but a character on a show called Sisters. Sisters, sisters. Um, sisters, sisters. It's definitely, it's not Tia. Tia and Tamara. Oh. <laughs> no, it's a show. It's a show. I think I'm that's like, called. Why do I know a show that's called that whole time? I think it's called Sisters. Okay. And a character named Fatima. All right. I hear that all the time. Fatima? Yes. I'm about to look her up. I do not see it. I do not see it. Is it Sisters with an A or E-R? I think it's A. Sisters Fatima. I never, I've never seen the show. Crystal Renee? I think. 
Oh yeah, I can see it. The first picture. It's I because can we both light skin. Uh, well, it, it helps. I'm not gonna lie. And the hair, like the first picture, literally, literally, y'all have the exact Let same me hair. See. This one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, mm, yeah, I can see it. Like I've always said, she's beautiful, but I don't see the, a tiny bit, a tiny bit. The so y'all have y'all have like two similarities, a tiny bit. Nothing crazy. That's though. not enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's easy to like hair and color. That's it. That's all it takes. <laughs> People call me common for that exact oh reason. Oh my god! Oh my god! I would be like, stop it, please, stop, stop, stop. I have gotten common more than anybody else for that exact reason because I'm they, I, I'm not even light skinned first and foremost, but they say I'm light skinned, bald head with a beard, so they say common. Why are you making that face? You don't think you like? Hell no, I'm brown. Let me see. I'm I'm dark. Well, I must you. be brown too. You light brown. Okay, well, I'm I think light we're both brown. light brown. Okay, you're slightly lighter than me, but we're light brown. Okay, yeah. I don't think I'm light skin. When I think light skin, I think Chris Brown, Steph Curry, like. Uh, eh. I think light skin. I see you. There. I'm like brown. Okay. I'm like I'm like Carmel. Okay. Light macchiato. Oh. Yeah, but we're in the same. We're in the same boat with that. <laughs> um. Well, listen. This talk has been great. I meant to ask you, how did you? Come across my IG, which reel did you see? Like, yes. Yeah. How you know I seen a reel? Because that's what everybody says. It just makes the most sense. Plus, it actually says such and such followed you from your reel. Oh, it does. Yeah. You know, that's, I don't pay attention yeah. on social media anymore. I yeah. just, I'm just up there uploading yeah, it Yeah, Yeah, I just assumed that that's what it was from. It man. definitely is. It was a podcast clip. Um... I cannot remember exactly what you and your guests were speaking about, but it had to do with Battle of the Sexes. It wasn't that specifically, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't that energy, mm -hmm. but it was, that was the realm yeah. of conversation. Yeah. And it was, I forgot what clip it was, but it was some, it, it made enough impact for me to be like, oh, let me follow him. This mm -hmm. is interesting. I would like to see more. Yeah. So. Well, I appreciate that. And I do have a lot of, like you quote unquote, battle the sexist, even though it's not necessarily like battle dialogue, I don't think. It's what social media makes it. Exactly. Exactly. And we, yeah. and we were talking about that earlier. You know, people in the comments turn it into that. And I really, when I bring, you know, I have a lot of women interviewed, obviously, and I try to bring like some understanding more mm -hmm. so than ridicule. And conflict. Exactly. Right. Like I try to bring understanding from both sides. So mm -hmm. I lay out my side, she lay out her side and I'll move like that. But I never try to have clickbait or, mm -hmm. you know, look what she's saying, y'all, she wrong. I never try to mm -hmm. make it that. But like you said, social media, that's the agenda now. So people spin it into that. And, um, but I think that's what, you know, helps make my content, you know, so likable and shared out. Because, again, I, I don't have a lot of followers, but my engagement be shitting on people with hundreds of thousands of followers because, you know, like they try to do the same stuff. Yes. They would make it conflicting or, you know, battle. They want to. Yeah. Exactly. They want to create conflict and... In hopes of people returning to argue and be arguing in the comments. Nobody and, wants that. Exactly. All right, Desi. I guess that's a sign to go. But exactly. And I I try to do the opposite where I bring both sides together, right, which right. I think helps create spread it. Because it's not just one side saying you're wrong. It's both sides getting their stuff off and then, you know, adding some, you know, healthy conversation. But nonetheless, you know, yes. I appreciate, uh, you know, you following first and foremost because that was the foundation of this being set up. I appreciate you, you know, responding to me, hitting you up, to coming on the show. Absolutely. Giving plenty of gems as far as the social media and YouTube world and just the, you know, brand world in general. I truly appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, just, you know, perspective on talk outside of, you know, that for certain things. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. I've had such a good time. Thank you. Such Thank a good you. time. That's Thank all you. I ask for. I try to make the vibe first, podcast second. Yes. <laughs> Um, so before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that y'all like, comment, subscribe, share it out. And also I have a questionnaire attached in the bio, whether you're watching or listening. Go ahead and click on that um, questionnaire. It takes two to three minutes to fill out. It just provides feedback for the day by day podcast. That way I can keep providing good quality content for y'all, for y'all liking. Uh, so thank you again, Leah Lay, for 
coming through the stew. <laughs> Appreciate you very much, you know, dropping gems and just being a great vibe in general. Uh, thank Desi. She's over in the corner right now. Come here, Des. Yo, Desi. All right, she in her feelings. <sighs> she is a woman dog at the end of the day, so that's my girl. But I thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> Until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.